For years now on this channel, I've covered various aspects of the history of American Horror Story, but to this day, one stone that I've left unturned is the history of AHS-themed attractions, like haunted houses, pop-up events, or promotional installations. So, when I realized I had completely ignored this vast and varied footnote in the history of the show, I knew a video needed to be made. Throughout the last decade, the FX marketing team has attempted 13 American Horror Story themed attractions, and today I'm going to walk you through each and every one of them, the good, the bad, and the ugly. 360 degree motion capture technology was utilized to evoke true feelings of horror by making the characters as real as possible. Starting in chronological order, the first AHS themed attraction I want to touch on is the FX Fearless Arena event, which occurred at San Diego Comic Con 2015. This event featured an experience themed around the then upcoming AHS Hotel. And from what we can see from the few videos of the attraction online, you essentially wander around a hotel set that looks nothing like the Hotel Cortez, but before you leave you get a key as a souvenir and a chance to grab some flying dollar bills. Alright, we're definitely starting off a bit soft, but trust me, some of these attractions down the line are worth writing home about. The next attraction I want to talk about, however, is one of the most questionable ones on the list. At San Diego Comic Con the following year in 2016, FX installed the FX Fearless AHS VR Experience, which gave fans the once in a lifetime chance to interact with some of the show's most well known and iconic characters in an unbelievably lifelike VR simulation. Tremble in fear as the crying nun from the Asylum poster takes you on a guided tour of the morgue before she kicks you out to the woods where some unrecognizable witches burn you at the stake. Don't worry though, you'll eventually wake up to the pleasant hospitality of Twisty the Clown, who throws a rubber chicken your way. Oh, and also a toaster. There's as real as possible. Then keep your hands and feet inside the bellhop cart as you inexplicably race down the hallway of the Hotel Cortez and then fall down the elevator shaft. Spooky! Alright, sarcasm aside, I'm sorry to start off this list with two crappy excuses for attractions, but let's just keep it moving to bigger and brighter things. 2016 also brought us the first ever collaboration between AHS and Universal Studios, Halloween Horror Nights, and the first legitimate attempt at an AHS-themed attraction in my eyes. For those who may not know, Halloween Horror Nights is an annual event at the Universal Studios parks which features various haunted houses, many of which are tied to some well-known horror IP. And starting in 2016, one of those IPs was American Horror Story, which received nearly identical houses at both Universal Studios Hollywood and Universal Studios Orlando. For this first year of the collaboration, the two haunted houses would both be themed around Murder House, Freak Show, and Hotel. And while both houses only feature scenes from those three seasons, there are still quite a bit of differences between the haunted house experience in Hollywood and the one in Orlando. So first let me take you through the one in Hollywood. The experience begins with you being transported into the murder house where you are greeted by Addie in her Halloween costume, watch out queen. And as you wander through these unfamiliar looking halls of the murder house, you're spooked by the rubber man who is constantly popping out of paintings. Another jump scare character in the house is Larry Harvey, who welcomes you to a spooky set piece mimicking the house fire that this character started in the murder house. And as you pass through the bathroom, the piggy man pays you a visit as well. Then as you await your turn in the next room, you hear a very short audio loop of Nora Montgomery calling for her husband Charles. who we see very soon after in the most cursed room of the murder house, the basement. In the basement, there's a pretty gory scene depicting the very real person, Elizabeth Short. Sure, it's gory in a theme park haunted house way, but I certainly don't want to show it, at the very least for monetization purposes. 
Elsewhere in the basement, Tate Langdon is sulking around, as is the Infantata. Another character in the house is more of an Easter egg, and it is the original fourth child of Constance Langdon, which according to this Haunted House's wiki, was a suggested addition by Ryan Murphy himself, since he thought it would be a clever Easter egg for the fans. The character dates back to a deleted scene in the pilot episode of Murder House, as this character was, at the time, intended to be the fourth child of Constance Langdon, but this character ended up being deleted from the pilot and the series as a whole, and he was officially retconned several years later, when Apocalypse introduced Rose as the canonical fourth child of Constance. And that basement scene concludes the murder house portion of this haunted house, but don't worry because we're heading straight to the freak show. Let's just hope Twisty doesn't throw any kitchen appliances at our heads this time. Outside of the freak show grounds, you'll stumble upon one of Twisty's victims before you come face to face with the clown himself, who as you'll see is in many places all at once. As you make your way into the mouth of the freak show, watch out as various characters pop out to scare you to varying degrees of success. Oh, and there's another Twisty. Inside you'll find Dandy Mott and everyone's favorite, Chester Kreb, chopping Marjorie in two. How sad. <laughs> Then another iconic freak show character, the monkey from the opening credits of course, gives you a warm send off as you prepare to check in for your stay at the Hotel Cortez. Dramatically popping out of doors at 5 second intervals in the hotel halls are none other than James Patrick March and the Countess. Then you'll see as the mattress man appears elated that you have finally made it to your room safely. For some reason though, you are then rushed out of your room and ushered into the Ten Commandment Killer's secret lair by a shy Sith Lord. Somehow, you then end up in March's cement prison hallway, but you make it out much faster than Ramona and Tristan did as soon enough you're in room 33, where the Countess fends you off as you're clearly imposing on some mother and son bonding time. After the Countess kicks you out and a curtain monster tries to grab you, you are then thrust into the harsh California sunlight as the first ever AHS haunted house ends. Honestly, this haunted house is not bad, but I've certainly seen better. I think a lot of the costumes and set pieces vary in quality, some are pretty great, others not so much, and while the murder house section took up most of the time, I feel like the more well-conceived and well-replicated set pieces were in the freak show and hotel sections. Maybe it's just the nature of the murder house, but a lot of that section felt like your run-of-the-mill haunted house, and not a ton of the sets looked a lot like the murder house looked like on the show. I'm of course just nitpicking a decade-old haunted house, so who really cares, but I think if I were in charge I would have scrapped the murder house section for this year and put those extra funds into making the freak show and hotel sections even more immersive and really make this haunted house feel like you're walking through the actual sets of the show, which as you'll see, some of the attractions later on achieve much more successfully. But also compared to some of the clunkers on this AHS themed attractions list, 2016's Halloween Horror Nights AHS House in Los Angeles is certainly one of the team's stronger efforts. The Hollywood version of this house also got some good press junkets with AHS VIPs Evan Peters, Dennis O'Hare, and Finn Wittrock walking through the house with a camera crew to promote both the Horror Nights event and the then upcoming Roanoke season. Oh my God. And additionally, Ellen DeGeneres memorably sent Ariana Grande through this very house as well. As I mentioned before, there are some significant differences between this house at Universal Hollywood and the one in Orlando. For starters, the beginning section of the murder house is completely cut from the Orlando version, with the murder house section in Orlando beginning with the basement scenes with Charles. There's also additional stuff with Troy down there, and more with the Infantata. Elsewhere in the basement, the Orlando version of the house packs in the Larry Harvey, the Piggy Man, and the Tate Langdon stuff into this extended basement scene as well. There is also an added section at the front door of the murder house after this, which is a pretty good recreation for all intents and purposes, which features both younger and older Moira. 
as well as the nurse ghosts. Then there's this weird liminal space with multiple rubber men before you enter the freak show section of the experience. Another difference with the Orlando version is that it features a section in the Morbidity Museum from Freak Show and a scene with blonde bet and dot mannequins for some reason being controlled by puppet strings. Dandy Mott's also got a slightly different appearance here as well, as does the Countess who welcomes you to the hotel section of the house in an elevator reminiscent of the season's marketing campaign. The Orlando version of the hotel section begins with you inside the lair of James Patrick March slash the Ten Commandments killer before you witness March commit one of his world-famous murders. The Orlando version also features a space that's like a hybrid of the vampire children's coffins and also the neon cages that the Countess kept some of her victims in. The Orlando version ends with the mattress man who to me looks much better thanks to the lack of any prosthetics, and then before you're released back into the real world, Twisty pays you one last visit on your way out of the Hotel Cortez. Honestly, I think I slightly prefer the Orlando version of this year's house, just because they did have a minimized murder house section in comparison, and it also felt like more budget and effort was put into making each section feel like it was ripped out of the show, with some minor exceptions here and there. Moving on to the next year, AHS returned to Universal's Halloween Horror Nights in both Hollywood and Orlando, but this time the houses would be almost completely different experiences. The Hollywood house would be completely themed around AHS Roanoke, which was the most recent season at the time in 2017, and in Orlando the team set out to cover the seasons that didn't get the spotlight last year, with a house themed around three seasons, Asylum, Coven, and an abridged version of the Roanoke House we see in Hollywood. So let's first start with what was called Volume 1 of the 2017 AHS Halloween Horror Nights Houses, the one that is completely themed around Roanoke. Your Roanoke nightmare begins outside as you must dodge the pigmen and avoid looking at their grotesque displays of murder. Speaking of murder, you soon stumble upon Ashley Gilbert getting murdered by the Butcher. Some may say she's just doing her job, but you know what, I'll just stay out of her business. Next you enter the Roanoke house through a pretty impressive facade, especially considering the size and the budget restraints that I'm sure they had. As you walk through the Roanoke halls, you'll notice that the Los Angeles house is reusing some of its tricks from last year, this time with the Butcher po popping out of an out of place painting. There's also just a loop of Sarah Paulson screaming throughout this entire house, which I'm sure the employees and the performers love to hear for hours on end. For the rest of the house, you just wander from room to room with set pieces like the pigtails on the walls, the murder wall, and the Roanoke basement. And as you venture through these rooms, you're greeted by characters like the Piggy Man again, the Butcher in a painting again, and the Roanoke version of the Nurse Ghosts. The only way you can escape the Roanoke house, of course, is through the tunnels, so as you make your way through those, be sure to keep your eye out for the Chen family and Edward Philippe Mott. Oh no, turns out the tunnels in this version of the Roanoke house lead straight to the Polk Farm, where you find Lee Harris getting her skin peeled off. And nobody's gonna help her? And then, before your Roanoke nightmare comes to an end, you must face off against some ginormous corn husk dolls, you know, like from the show. Alright, corn husk dolls aside, I really liked this haunted house in comparison to the ones from the year prior. I think having a complete experience themed around one season really helps with the immersion and allows for the people who designed the experience to have a more consistent atmosphere and at least some story progression. I thought the interior of the house looked really close to how it looked on the show, you know, just scaled down quite a bit and it just makes me wish Universal and FX struck a deal to do more of these haunted houses each year, because I wish every season had a fully committed attraction devoted to it, just like this Roanoke haunted house. Just like the year prior, FX got some AHS cast members to go through the house to promote both the attraction and the upcoming season, although unlike the cast members they got in the previous year, this year almost none of the cast members were actually in the season that the house is based around, it's not a big deal, but it's a little odd to watch these actors go through a Roanoke-themed attraction, knowing that they have zero personal connection to anything happening in the house. Nonetheless, those cast members were Allison Pill, Billy Lord, Leslie Grossman, 
Billy Eichner, Colton Haynes, and James Morosini, all members of the then upcoming cult cast. James Morosini actually is the only one of the bunch to have appeared in Roanoke, as he played the spirit chaser Bob in the season finale. <laughs> Ellen being Ellen, though, thankfully put Sarah Paulson through the terrors of the Roanoke house once again. <laughs> Moving on to volume two of the Halloween Horror Nights 2017 AHS house in Orlando, which would sadly be the final AHS haunted house in partnership with Universal's Halloween Horror Nights. As I said before, this house is themed around Asylum, Coven, and Roanoke, so this experience begins with you outside of Briarcliff Asylum, in a pretty elaborate exterior set. Inside, you are welcomed by our old friend, the crying nun from the promotional material, only now she's got a few sisters. Then you witness bloody face murder Adam Levine before you are transported back in time to the 60s where we see some familiar faces, like Santa Claus. In the next room, bear witness to the Angel of Death's mighty wingspan as she gives one of the patients her kiss of death. Oh, and Pepper's here too. Ah, and bloody face. Then you find yourself in Dr. Arden's lab, which is never a good place to be, but it seems that you got a lucky escape as you miraculously find a curtain that leads straight into Miss Robicho's Academy, beginning the coven portion of this experience. The first coven room depicts some images reminiscent of the coven marketing campaign, but soon enough you enter the greenhouse where Cordelia wails from, you know, getting acid in her eyes. Once you're through with Cordelia, you enter Spaulding's room with all of his dolls. Then in the next room, you're somehow in a completely different house, Delphine LaLaurie's house to be exact where it's depicting the only scene that they could possibly depict in this setting without getting the entirety of Universal Studios shut down, the scene where Delphine tortures her daughter. Even so, I think it would have been a good call to just not include Delphine in this attraction. Nonetheless, we move on with a visit from Papa Legba before you're suddenly thrust into the world of Roanoke, which seems to be functioning as a backwards version of the Hollywood Roanoke experience, as instead of ending at the Polk farm, you begin there and you're greeted by Mama Polk doing a murder. Then you enter the Roanoke tunnels where you're greeted by Edward and an inexplicably smoking member of the Chen family. And our good friend whose name we love mispronouncing, Scathich, makes an appearance as well. The nurses get a moment in Orlando as well, and this experience then ends with a puppet or animatronic of a member of the Chen family doing some yoga stretches in the wreckage from the chandelier from chapter 9 of Roanoke. Alright, honestly, this one isn't my favorite. I wish there was a world where these four AHS Halloween Horror Nights houses could have each been themed around their own individual seasons, because in this one especially, including these three completely separate stories feels a bit all over the place and the theming isn't as strong compared to the Roanoke themed counterpart in Hollywood. This one did have some good moments, and I'm glad Asylum and Coven got to dip their toes into the world of haunted housery, but every other Halloween Horror Nights house has given me at least an ounce of FOMO, but I can't say I'm sad I missed out on this one. Alright, now with the days of the HHN and AHS collaborations behind us, brace yourselves for a truly mixed bag of AHS attractions from the years that followed. 2018 San Diego Comic Con gave us the AHS Eccentricities Gallery, which consisted of a gallery of spooky objects with vague connections to the AHS universe and a lot of specific hints towards the then upcoming season, Apocalypse. Some of the objects in the gallery include a chandelier made of teeth, which perhaps references Roanoke, 
or this ram head which could be a reference to either coven or apocalypse these things which are definitely giving apocalypse as is this satanic textbook and there's also this baby doll which again could be a coven reference at this eccentricities galleries guests were given an ipad that enhanced their experience by adding some animations to the objects using augmented reality the augmented reality portion of the eccentricities gallery was actually worked on by the same company that did the fx fearless vr simulation that we talked about earlier and at the end of the experience fans could take a photo with basically a snapchat filter that gives them burn scars which I mean, wouldn't have been my first idea, but anyways, let's move on as fast as we can from whatever this was to the next year's San Diego Comic Con in 2019, where FX pulled off what might be my favorite AHS themed attraction they've ever attempted, which is known as AHS 1984 Face the Darkness. Immersive haunted excursion through the world of AHS 1984. The goal was to give our AHS fans what they want, the biggest scares imaginable. To achieve that, the world we created had to feel as realistic as possible, and the stakes high. I guess we have to go into the woods. The narrative-based experience brought consumers to Camp Redwood. Welcome to Camp Redwood. Custom lighting rigs turn day to night and highly choreographed jump scares. Added another layer of suspense. The audio design had an extra touch of personalization for consumers as they would hear their name whispered among the trees as they walked through the woods. This attraction accomplishes a themed haunted house experience that proves that you don't need all the chaos and excess of some of those Halloween Horror Night houses of years past. The 1984 Face the Darkness experience begins with you as a camp counselor as real actors guide you through the story of the attraction. As a side note, the characters they're playing are completely new for this attraction. They are not playing any actual characters that appear in 1984. I guess since this attraction happened before the season came out, they didn't want to give anybody any ideas about the actual characters in the season, or more likely the marketing campaign behind this attraction were not given any context of the actual show, so they maybe had to make up their own story based on the promotional material. Whatever it is, what we got was a fun haunted house experience that is heavily reliant on these actors, as well as immersive set design and special effects. After these actors give you the necessary exposition on your upcoming adventure, the power goes out and you have to, well, face the darkness where you'll lose some of your fellow counselors along the way as you live out an immersive slasher movie experience. By the end of the haunted house you even get a photo of yourselves that was taken unbeknownst to you at a random jump scare moment in the said darkness. Like I said, this experience relies heavily on those actors so kudos to them for pulling this off but also the production design, costumes, makeup, lighting, and sound design, which all worked together perfectly to make a cohesive AHS-themed experience that didn't even need any existing characters to make fans feel like they are inside of the season it is themed around. Moving on though, in 2020, much like every other major event that year, San Diego Comic Con was cancelled and replaced with a virtual event. And just like in years prior, FX utilized the convention to promote the brand of AHS, even if 2020 was the first year in the show's history to not air a season. Because there wasn't exactly an upcoming season to promote at the time, the virtual AHS event at 2020's Comic Con would instead consist of a quote-unquote test of terror, which Deadline described as follows. In celebration of the nine seasons of American Horror Story, fans will dive into a unique gamified trivia experience. They will navigate their way through some fearful moments by testing their knowledge of the series and solving escape room-like mechanics. In reality, the Test of Terror was like a enhanced BuzzFeed quiz, and those aforementioned escape room-like mechanics, they're essentially just solving anagrams or spelling out the answer to the question. The real star of the show in this quiz is the artwork, and the quiz itself is pretty bare bones. Even one of the questions erroneously claims that Sister Jude killed the little girl with her car, when in reality the little girl did survive the hit and run in Asylum. 
By the end of the quiz, you are asked what your favorite season of the show is, and your prize by completing the quiz is a personalized piece of artwork inspired by whatever season you claimed was your favorite. Shout out to AHS Zone on Twitter for documenting each of these prizes. Just to show you all of them, here is the artwork you got if your favorite season was Murder House, Asylum, Coven, Freak Show, Hotel, Roanoke, Cult, Apocalypse, and lastly, 1984, which was the most recent season at the time. It was cute, especially for that first summer of COVID, but when compared to some of these other quote-unquote attractions, this test of terror was a little bit underwhelming. Get used to it though, because for the rest of these AHS-themed attractions, underwhelming is certainly a common theme. I think the world of AHS-themed attractions peaked the year prior with 2019's 1984-themed Haunted House at Comic-Con, and unfortunately, nothing that's come after has come even remotely close to being as well done as that 1984 experience was. At this point, it's clear that FX does not allocate as much of a budget towards the promotional campaigns of AHS seasons anymore, and it's also clear that the in-person marketing for the show has shifted away from these haunted houses and more towards pop-up shops and glorified merchandise booths. Which brings us right into 2021 with its AHS Night Bites Bakery pop-up shops, which had locations in both Los Angeles and New York City. Essentially, these pop-up shops just sold cookies with a handful of AHS-themed decorations. The themed cookies include a couple themed around American Horror Stories, Season 1, Double Feature, Apocalypse, Hotel, Freak Show, 1984, and another one which is labeled as a Freak Show cookie, even though it uses a clown from the cult marketing campaign. Interesting. Also, a third AHS Night Bites popped up in Provincetown, where they filmed Red Tide. Some of the exclusive Provincetown offerings include this Zoe Benson cookie and an additional double feature cookie. And for some reason, Olivia Lux was photographed partaking in the AHS cookie festivities. Given that this is the only AHS-themed attraction from 2021, and also given the ones that came before and some that followed, this cookie pop-up shop was underwhelming to say the least, but I'm sure the cookies were good. Moving right along, 2022 gave us two AHS-themed attractions in promotion of both the main AHS series, but also its spin-off. At 2022's Comic-Con, the spin-off's second season got the spotlight as it was featured in an attraction called the FX Labyrinth. The experience pretty much consisted of guests wandering around a spooky garden where every once in a while they may stumble upon something from the show. The garden features a pretty cool replica of the dollhouse from the dollhouse episode of American Horror Stories, as well as fully committed actors dressed up as the human-turned dolls from that very episode, who then reenact a dinner scene. It's honestly a cool atmosphere, and the actors' makeup and costumes are spot on. I just prefer something with a little bit more of a story. This one just kind of feels like you're having a fever dream about being lost in a maze. But moving on to the other AHS attraction of 2022, to promote its 11th season NYC, the AHS marketing team erected a pop-up shop in Greenwich Village in New York City. The pop-up shop is themed to look like a sex shop with an emphasis on BDSM and leather, just like the promotional campaign for NYC. But in the store, a quote-unquote safe word specialist asks you some questions. But essentially, you are being quizzed on what t-shirt you want, and your answers will affect the color of t-shirt as well as what word it says on it. Here are some examples of shirts that guests got at this pop-up shop. Eh, frankly, this one is not my favorite. I mean, the sex shop theming is actually more immersive and relevant to the season than a lot of these promotional attractions, but to have this all be some facade to get a crappy t-shirt, to me it seems like a waste of time and money rather than a worthwhile AHS fan experience. Speaking of wastes of time, 2023's San Diego Comic Con gave us the AHS Delicate Wicked Wellness Center experience in which fans could get an evaluation from actors decked out to look like the promotional material for AHS Delicate. These uh, nurses serve their patients wellness shots, which seems to literally just be wellness shots, like with actual fruit juice, vegetable juice, but I guess they also wave fake syringes in your face too. So how's that for an immersive horror experience? 
From what I could tell, that's literally all that happened inside of that year's AHS booth at Comic-Con. So let's move into our final AHS themed attraction. The most recent AHS themed attraction just happened at this year's San Diego Comic-Con. The FX Fearless Elevator was advertised as an immersive elevator ride that took you through scenes from all 12 seasons of American Horror Story while also giving writers a first glimpse at Grotesquery, the upcoming FX horror show from Ryan Murphy that will air this fall. What the attraction actually is, though, that's another story. At first, from videos, it seemed somewhat impressive, a spooky elevator with LED screens giving the illusion of movement, but when it comes to how the elements of AHS were incorporated into the experience, well, essentially they just reused footage from the ad campaigns of the seasons they decided to showcase. And then they also blatantly overlooked a couple of seasons as well. Murder House barely gets anything, Asylum barely gets anything recognizable, Coven gets a few seconds, Freak Show gets a decent amount of time, Hotel gets a lengthy sequence as does Colt, Apocalypse promos are kind of shown, Double Feature gets a couple of seconds, we get a tiny flash of NYC, and a decent few seconds of Delicate. But the attraction completely overlooks any elements from either Roanoke or 1984. Given that this attraction literally only uses promo material like teasers, I guess it makes a little bit of sense that they left out Roanoke since they didn't have a traditional promotional campaign or title sequence to pull from from that season. But 1984 had tons of promo material, so I can't imagine why that season got the axe in this half-baked attraction. Even if all 12 seasons were included like they advertised, by just reusing footage that everybody's seen before, you're just wasting people's time. This attraction takes like a minute long and AHS fans will get absolutely nothing new out of it. And as for that grotesquery teaser that fans were promised, well, it's just the words hell is here appearing on the wall outside of the elevator. Go at your own risk. Well, there you have it. There is the history of AHS themed attractions. Let me know your favorites in the comments below and let me know if you've ever been to any of these attractions in person. Also, let me know if I missed any because I have a feeling there might be more out there from farther back in the past that my research just isn't showing me. But anyways, give this video a like if you made it this far. Stay tuned for more videos on AHS news and my supersized Scream Queens video, which is on the horizon. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.